I'm Anna Reed. I'm a Senior Program Development and Research Associate with APA, and I'm here with Michael Ludwig, the Planning Administrator for the City of Des Moines. How are you today, Mike? Great. Having well, a good conference? Having a great conference. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about Plan DSM, which received silver, silver level recognition through the Comprehensive Plan Standards Recognition Program pilot. Yeah. Um, so could you provide a little background on um, your comprehensive plan, um, starting just providing a little context on the city of Des Moines sure. uh, for us. So um, Des Moines is the capital city of Iowa. Um, we're located pretty central in the state at the intersection of Interstate 35 and Interstate 80, so two major corridors that are uh, uh, converging in, in Des Moines. Uh, we have a population of about 210,000, and the Des Moines metro population is about 600,000. And so um, uh, while the suburban communities have been growing for a lot of years, Des Moines was pretty stagnant from about 1960 to 1990. We actually lost population at that time, um, mainly associated with the um, uh, building of the interstate um, through through town, and it, and it, uh, there was a lot of flight to the suburbs that occurred for about 30 years. So we previously hit our all-time high population in 1960, and um, we just reached a new high in uh, 2014. So um, we finally have gained gained back and exceeded our all-time high population. Great. Um, can you tell us a little bit then about what the community priorities and challenges were going into your comprehensive plan sure. process? Sure. So um, Des Moines' last comprehensive plan was, was completed in 2000, and um, it had a really great community character element in it. It, it identified a lot of um, architectural character and um, use character throughout the community. But the future land use map on it was really more of an existing conditions map, and so it left every zoning decision up to a, a public hearing and discussion um, about whether or not that change was appropriate but didn't really provide a lot of guidance or, or future vision of, of where we thought uses should go. So it was kind of bring us a project and we'll, we'll see if we like it or not. Um, so we worked under that my first 12 years of the city and it was, it was somewhat challenging um, I'll say, to say the least. Um, neighborhoods were frustrated I think by the code because Ultimately, the, the development community was, was responsible for bringing projects to them and, and uh, set up some contentious debates. Um, it also wasn't really well linked with our um, transportation master plan. And so we knew we needed to, do no, to uh, complete a new comprehensive plan, and it was just a matter of getting funding for that. Um, we had uh, applied for several grants unsuccessfully. And then in about 2010, we uh, wrote a grant to uh, HUD and EPA and the uh, uh, DOT for uh, sustainable communities grant and for the region. And so our MPO worked on uh, our uh, tomorrow plan, which is our plan for sustainable development. And so uh, while we weren't successful in getting the local uh, comp plan money, we did get the regional money. And that really set a course for this project, for our comp plan, because the tomorrow plan, um, really to help define Des Moines' role in the region. And uh, instead of competing with our suburban neighbors for, for development, I think it emphasized our role in being the urban center of, of the metro. And so when we went to do our comprehensive plan, we specifically said we were going to take the tomorrow plan, that regional plan, and implement it locally. And so our plan title is Plan DSM, Creating Our Tomorrow. And so as direct play off that, we used um, marketing from it um, we used the color schematics from the logo in the, in the Tomorrow Plan, carried that on down into Plan DSM. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like it was a really critical time for us because we needed uh, to kind of go back to basics of planning and have a comp plan that was based on smart planning principles and very linked to transportation master planning and transit and, and really giving your best um, vision of future land use for the community tied in with other goals. Um, so within the comprehensive plan standards, your, your plan scored very well on the authentic participation um, practice, and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, how you engage the community throughout the planning process and have sort of continued to engage the community uh, sure. through implementation. Sure. So we had um, uh, pretty robust participation in the Tomorrow Plan by our citizens from the city of Des Moines, and we wanted to build on that. Um, we started out with about four um, kind of 
uh, I would say public open house meetings for, for the beginning of our outreach. And we basically got a lot of the same people that had gone to the tomorrow plan meetings and it was not a very diverse uh, representation. Um, people don't think of Des Moines being very diverse, but um, just for example, there's 32,000 students in the Des Moines public school system. Um, they speak 100 languages and represent 88 countries in the Des Moines public school district. And so for a community like Des Moines, there is very diverse community <laughs> to serve. Um, so we knew we needed better representation and so our steering committee and staff got together and, and developed a plan where we went out and held 15 additional meetings with underrepresented populations. Um, we went out and met with our specific targeted meetings with African American community, Latino community. Uh, we went out and met with our Southeast Asian community. Uh, very, from the 1970s, we've had um, Vietnamese refugees that relocated to Des Moines who have now been here for 40 years. And recently we've had Bhutanese refugees moving to Des Moines. and um, uh, just really felt like we could we could reach out to to those populations in the community, um, the LGBTQ uh, community in Des Moines. Uh, we reached out then, especially to the Des Moines Public Schools. We uh, attended three government classes, and uh, it was urban studies classes mm -hmm. at our central campus that we met with, and those were the most diverse meetings that we had because we had every every representation. In, in, in the Des Moines Public School District in our community at those meetings and wanted to find out what the students wanted, not just from their ethnicity background, but age background. What, what did they want Des Moines to be in the future? And so uh, we held those 15 meetings and the number one thing we heard at those was they didn't want that to be the only time we talked to them. They wanted to know when we were coming back to talk with them again. And so um, we ended up having uh, Iowa State University Graduate Planning School um, uh, do some work on our comprehensive plan to host um, on our goals and um, policies, um, visioning, not our visioning, but I guess our, our review. And so we had a mandate in their contract. They had to go out and meet with every one of the groups that we met with previously to discuss the actual plans and goals. So we would met with them during the visioning, and they went back and followed up on the goals and policies to make sure that we'd addressed concerns that they'd had. So I, I think... Um, We've continued that after the adoption um, with individual meetings on, on topics from helping some of our Bhutanese um, uh, refugees get connected with other uh, resources in the community. I mean, it's as simple as um, finding soccer fields for them to have soccer on the weekends at that weren't, weren't, didn't have a fee associated with them or, or didn't have soccer tournaments already booked on them and things like that. And so I think it was just establishing those relationships and continuing to build on those relationships. I wanted to circle back to the youth engagement for a moment because yeah. that's often something you don't hear a lot about in yeah. planning processes, but we are talking about, you know, your tagline is creating our tomorrow and it's a 30-year planning right. horizon. Um, so how did you end up incorporating that into the, the process or how did you come to seeing that as an important thing to incorporate into the process? Well, we, one, we just knew that our, our student population was so diverse in Des Moines Public Schools and, you know, I think we initially approached it from a, from a perspective of how could we better communicate with our diverse population. Um, we have uh, first generation refugees moving to Des Moines. Um, oftentimes a 12 year old child or younger is the first person in their family to speak English and they come to our counter at our building permit counter and are translating what a planner is saying at a counter to their parents on a zoning related issue. A really unfair position to be putting a, a child in to be a translator for a technical legal issue like zoning um, and so we know we have to do a better job of making documents available in multiple languages and we we knew we were heading down that approach um, but as we started meeting with the students it became very apparent that what we really needed to find out was what's going to keep you here I mean for a lot of years people just left the city when they graduated and we've had a lot of people now move back because they're raising families so we wanted to know does Des Moines have what you want today? What does it need tomorrow? What, will, what are your plans when you graduate? Where, where are you going to go? Are you going to go off to college? Where are you going? Do you want to come back to Des Moines? What would bring you back to Des Moines? Those types of questions to try and vision out 25 years of where we needed to be. So it was, it was very valuable.
And your plan was adopted in? 2000, a year ago, a year, a year ago, ago this month. Yeah. And so can you talk a little bit about where you are in the implementation sure. process? So we had an implementation chapter that had um, uh, several um, intermediate, or, uh, immediate goals, one to two years, intermediate goals that were in the five year range and then beyond in the plan of the 25 year time frame. And so uh, a couple key things happened. After the adoption of our plan, our city council uh, developed Guide DSM, which played off of our, 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 our branding of our comp plan. Um, comp plan, Plan DSM is the umbrella document. Guide DSM is the council strategic plan. And so it falls underneath that umbrella. And so they prioritized funding for elements out of our implementation chapter. And so several key initiatives are going on right now that were funded by our council. We have a transportation master plan, which is the first transportation master plan for the city of Des Moines, standalone. Um, we have a parks and recreation master plan that's under work. And um, we also have neighborhood and corridor planning that's occurring all under those different things. And then finally, we're working on a new form-based zoning code for the city that should be done in September or October of this year. So those are all things that were called for in the comprehensive plan and then ultimately funded within a year by our city council. So a lot of buy-in on our, on our planning effort. And then just as a final question, um, why did you decide to apply for the comprehensive plan designation? Sure. So um, we had a project manager a consultant that we had hired for our project and um, um, both the project manager and our staff are uh, heavily involved in AICP uh, credentialed planners. Um, we knew this, the sustaining places um, document was going to be a basis for our plan from the very beginning. Um, Bruce Knight actually came to Des Moines and spoke to um, uh, a, an affordable housing uh, conference in Des Moines. And um, we were at dinner one night and we were talking about our plan, how we were following the sustaining places model. And uh, he said, well, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a um, uh, recognition program that, that, that they're working on. And so you should keep your eye open for it when it comes open. So uh, when we were developing the plan, we also had the Iowa State students, uh, graduate students, evaluate our plan based on the criteria in the Sustaining Places document. So when we went out for public outreach on our goals and policies at the very end of the planning document, and when we presented the plan to the council, we used that evaluation as part of our presentation of what level we thought we would qualify for under the plan. Did you also end up with silver? Oh, uh, we had gold. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> but, um, but it was really interesting because we had them evaluate based on that, as well as the um, uh, uh, star community rating system, mm -hmm. both of those. And because we were already a star community and wanted to see how we were, how the new document would help with that. So we had that, we'd had that already, um, you know, in our thought process. And so when the pilot program came out, we pretty much had our materials and our, had our evaluation from, from work that the students had done. And, and we applied for the pilot program and we're happy to be invited to, to apply for the awards program, so. Great, well thanks so much for taking All the right. time to talk. It's a pleasure, thanks.